the ram mandir of ayodhya why so much celebration about it at the same time why so much hatred against it how a lost temple became the center of politics and how it fed the dispute between hindus and muslims who was a wrong and more importantly what exactly happened in the past who did what and how it ended up to be the longest struggles of bharat which lasted for more than 500 years this video will answer all your questions the year was for 1928 Baba the founder of the Mughal empire built a masjid in Ayodhya which was then called as Babri Masjid but how do we say it was built over the destruction of a temple according to his own book Babar Nama Artusa ki Babri Baba was approached by two fakirs to build a mosque over the temple ruins then in the place of that mandir Mir Baki the commander of Baba constructed the Babri Masjid this is what Baba Nama says even if we choose to overlook Baba's own autobiography the writings of foreign authors confirms the same and these writings played a significant role in the case of ram mandir in 18th century the jesuit missionary joseph t fontale visited ayodhya and wrote a book about it in that book he clearly mentioned that a fort associated with lord rama was demolished and a mosque was constructed in its place governor general lord wellesley had a surgeon named francis buchanan in 1810 he made a note about the existence of a temple dedicated to ram and how it was replaced by a masjid an anglo irish author robert montagmary who traveled to india in the early 17th century mentioned in his book about the destruction of a temple and the construction of a mosque over it but the actual conflict started in 1850s hindus started climbing the place where babri masjid was built as their own and britishers cleverly added fuel to the fire they built a barrier to create a separation between the inner and outside courtyards and then the Britishers permitted the Muslims to pray inside the mosque while the outside courtyard was designated for Hindus for a quite few years Hindus and Muslims were praying at the same location without much problem but when Hindus wanted to build a small temple on Ram Chaputra the Muslims obstructed it not just that a person named Mahad Asghar filed a suit claiming rent for the Ram Chaputra Ram Chaputra was the raised platform situated outside the mosque which is allotted for Hindus to perform their puja so in 18 85 a person named mahant raghubir das submitted a request in the fasiabad court seeking permission to build a small shelter kind of temple on ram chapura and the judge stated that it was unfortunate that the masjid was built on the land that was sacred to hindus but since the construction was made 358 years back it was too late to reverse the process the tension between hindus and muslims was increasing day by day and that ended up in a communal riot triggered by a house lotter in the nearby shah jahanpur village at the end of the riot the walls around the masjid and one of the domes of the masjid were damaged by hindus and that later was reconstructed by the british the next big turn in the history of ram mandir took place on the night of december 22nd 1949 out of nowhere the idol of ram emerged inside the mosque but who kept it there no idea hindus claimed that the idol appeared magically with the grace of lord ram while muslims blamed hindus for placing the idol inside a masjid both the parties approached court hindus were seeking permission to worship the deity while muslims approached the court saying the idol should be removed from there so the government announced it as a place of dispute and locked its gates but again hindus filed a petition to enter the masjid and perform puja citing the right to worship and surprisingly they were granted permission and that is when the movement started turning in favor of hindus again in 1984 things started getting serious when the vishwa hindu parishad committee started a campaign called jam janam bhoomi movement they started collecting funds and bricks with jai shri ram engraved on them on top of that the court of ayodhya ordered to open the masjid for hindus for their pujas in 1986 the locks of the masjid were opened after 37 years and hindus were allowed to take darshan inside the masjid remember until 1986 only the pujari was allowed but now the hindu devotees were given permission to enter the masjid this very obviously angered the muslims and they formed a committee called babri mosque action committee and they started protesting then in 1989 rajiv gandhi the then prime minister of india allowed the vishwa hindu parishad committee to lay foundation for the ram janam bhoomi by digging a 200 liter pit next to the 
disputed area. While things were getting bad day by day, in 1990, B.B. Lal, the former director of the Archaeological Survey of India, wrote an article in an RSS magazine. He mentioned that he had found remains of a temple under the mask and his team found pillar bases right next to the south of the mask. A lot of historians criticized him and questioned him, but B.B. Lal stood by his words. In 1991, that's when BJP party's minister Kalyan Singh came to power and things started taking a very serious turn from there. Kalyan Singh publicly supported the construction of Ram Mandir next to Babri Masjid and he helped to acquire 2.77 acres of land next to Babri Masjid and he took steps to make entry easy for Hindus. Now comes the important part. On 6th November 1992, BJP and Vishwa Hindu Parishad along with their followers rallied at the disputed area. There were approximately 1,50,000 volunteers but the security and management was so poor, the rally soon became Violent. Within two hours of the rally, a young guy managed to climb the mask hosting a saffron flag and others followed him. We can ask what were the police doing? Well, there were 1,50,000 people. What can a bunch of policemen do? What followed was an unfortunate series of riots and killings all over the northern India. The very next day, more than 30 temples were destroyed in Pakistan and many others in Bangladesh. Even in UK, Muslims attacked multiple temples. Moreover, the riots spread to Mumbai, Surat, Ahmedabad, Kanpur, Delhi, Bhopal and several other cities which killed more than 2,000 people. Just in Mumbai alone, 575 Muslims and 275 Hindus were killed. On 16th December 1992, the Congress government at the centre, headed by Narasimha Rao, set up an inquiry commission. Shortly after that, the court passed the Ayodhya Acquisition Act of 1993. By this act, the central government acquired an area of about 68 acres, including the disputed land. Then in 2003, as per the orders of the Allahabad High Court, the Archaeological Survey of India started digging the disputed land. A team of 131 labourers, including 52 Muslims, were engaged in the excavations and they found remains of a temple from the 10th century. An important person to mention here is archaeologist K.K. Muhammad. An archaeologist has rebuilt and revived more than 100 temples to this day and was also a part of the excavation team of Babri Masjid in 1975. He courageously defended B.B. Lal and explained how his findings were suppressed by the leftist historians. In 2010, the Allahabad High Court delivered its judgment under the Jam Mandir case. It divided the disputed land into three parts, one third for the Sunni Vakta board and one third for a religious group called Nirmohi Akara and one third for the Jam Lalla Birajman. But all the three parties I mentioned above were not happy with this judgment and they appealed in the Supreme Court. Then as we all know, on 9th November 2009, the Supreme Court gave its judgment. It ordered to hand over the land to a trust to build the Jam Janam Bhumi or Jam Mandir. And for Muslims, it ordered the government to give five acres of land in another place to build their mosque. And that's how a struggle, a battle that started 500 years back came to an end. Now who was it right and who was it wrong here? There is no way we can deny the existence of a temple on that land before the Babri Masjid was built. And for me, it's not really surprising to see that a masjid was built over the destruction of the temple. When the Islamic invasion was at its peak, there were countless numbers of temples destroyed and masjids were built over it. It's an inevitable fact. But why do people think this one temple is important? Because this is the birthplace of Jama, just like Mecca for Muslims. Imagine some 500 years back, somebody invaded Mecca and destroyed that holy place and built their religious structure over it. Won't the local people try to revive or reclaim their religious structure? If they do so, will we say that's wrong? Isn't the same thing happening in Ayodhya? That place is extremely important for Hindus because it's believed that Sri Ram was born there. But on the other hand, for Muslims, it's not religiously important. It was built by Baba, the founder of the Mughal Empire, who is known for his cruelty. He is not the kind of person anybody should look up to. But this side, you have Sri Ram, a person who is known for his morality and virtues. So rightfully, that place belonged to Hindus. But are we going to justify the vandalism that happened there? I am not going to. For sure, things should have been dealt in a more democratic and constitutional way. Imagine you have this religious structure right in front of your eyes for generations and somebody comes and destroys it. How terrible would that be? So I understand the 
the plight of Muslims, but isn't the same thing that happened with Hindus for thousand years. So we should also be ready to see the kind of rage these people have in their hearts. There are few places that's extremely religiously important for Hindus, like Kashi, Madura, Dwaraka, Ayodhya, Rameshwaram. There are few places like this. If people want to revive their religiously significant places, we should be ready for that. But it would be great if both the parties sit together and come to a peaceful conclusion instead of fighting for centuries. Whatever has happened, has happened for good. A 500 years of struggle has come to an end. Now Sri Ram is here, back to his birthplace. Sri Ram is not the kind of person who is limited to a religion. He is universal. His homecoming should be celebrated and I am so damn excited to celebrate. Jai Sri Ram.